Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you to Study IQ in this daily Hindu analysis video. And in the evening, these PIB videos come both in Hindi and English and in the morning, the Hindu videos come. So PDFs you can get on the Telegram channel and the website of Study IQ and they are also available daily on my Facebook group of uh, Amit Sani group for IS preparation. So there you can get these PDFs. And about the Study IQ pen drive courses, call on these numbers and you can get these uh, uh, these pen drive videos. They are going to help you certainly whether you are preparing for the UPSC, RBI, SSC, Railway, Bank examination. All these uh, courses are available, created by experts and selected people. Now the MCQs that I gave to you yesterday, Macedonia is capital is Kopje and Izmir is the city in Turkey. Okay, so it's a wrong option and it's a, not a member of EU now it is going to be a member of EU because Greece is allowing Macedonia now because Macedonia is ready to change its name to North Macedonia so that's why it's again a wrong option D none is the answer second Krishna Sobti was a writer a very bold writer in uh, 1960s 70s and she got Sahitya Academy Award and the Gyanpeet Award both so that's okay but it is wrong she didn't go get the Booker's Prize for this Okay, Mitra Marjani was her creation, but she did not get the Booker's Prize for it. So only two is the correct answer here. Next, Public Account Committee. As I told you, Leader of Opposition is the uh, chairperson for this Public Account Committee and not the PM is heading it. So that's why this option would be wrong. And CAG is the friend, philosopher and guide of the PSE. And CAG does not have any kind of responsibility regarding the policy making or any kind of suggestion. It audits the accounts of center state and these PSUs. So D none would be the answer here. Now some important issues today. You see, you cannot call them editorials, but uh, they are certainly uh, explanatory. This is regarding the Zira Lenon. It's a toxin produced by fungus. You see, you know about the fungus uh, when any humid surface is there. Then on this surface, after some time, you see a layer uh, kind of a powdery substance which is there and these are fungus these are not plants these are not animals and these are a specific group and they produce some toxins because they are consistently working on that surface whether it's a cereal a grain or any kind of cloth so they are trying to digest it and they are producing some toxins you must have heard about the uh, aflatoxins this question appeared two three years back in upsc where they asked about this aflatoxin okay so these are also created by funguses now see zero linone is also a very dangerous compound but you see the problem here is we have recognized aflatoxins but we don't have any official limits of consumption of this zero linone even european union has this limit and they have set uh, and they have recognized this as a carcinogen product but we don't recognize it yet so that's the issue and normally when in these uh, poor facilities of uh, storage in india Yesterday also we talked about this issue. So poor facilities are there in India and sometimes these uh, stored uh, grains and all they become humid. Sometimes they are soaked in rain or something, something like that. So in this rainy season or in winters, these funguses are big issue. These are big problems. And when they work on these cereals, they produce these toxins. Okay. Indian Institute of Toxicology Research, which is there in Lucknow. It did a study and it found in the samples from U, uh, UP Uttar Pradesh out of 117 samples, 70 samples were contaminated by this particular chemical that is zero linone. And you see in India, no data existed until now because we don't have done much studies on this toxin. And uh, this is found in wheat, maize and barley. These are commonly consumed cereals. Okay. And you see the body that is statutory body FSSCI, Food Safety and Standard Authority of India, which is coming under the Ministry of Consumer Affairs. Okay. And it uh, uh, releases these guidelines regarding these food processing industries and all and regarding these food products. So it does not impose maximum limit for zero linon. That's the issue. It always issues guidelines regarding a lot of issues uh, when uh, it appeared regarding the uh, bread two years back when we uh, discussed about the potassium bromate I think okay so those are common things that usually FSSI talks about but it did not put any limit for zero linon and you see in Europe also they have uh, put it in a category of group 3 carcinogen that means it's not a very much a, a prude substance that is going to uh, harm you but 
certainly speculations are there certainly chances are there that it can be highly carcinogenic so it needs a lot of trials you see if we talk about the other chemicals aflatoxin dioxin valenol and argot and petulin these are also fungal toxins this petulin is found in apples it is uh, many times it is reported in the newspapers and all so petulin is very famous in apples and aflatoxin aflatoxin is a category 1 carcinogen it means it's a very potent cancer causing substance now see uh, it was seen that chronic aflatoxin consumption has been shown to cause liver cancer so you see so dangerous these chemicals are and we are talking about it when we came to know in some studies who knows how many chemicals we are consuming in this way in our normal lifestyle so that's why our quality controls are really uh, really perilous and they are not giving right information to the consumers many times uh, the corruptions are the issues or uh, the poor quality control and a very poor management of these uh, guidelines and their execution so these are the common problems but now we have seen we have found this issue there is a case of zero lenon and certainly it is a dangerous situation okay now see uh, zero lenon behaves like estrogen what is estrogen it's a growth hormone it's a uh, sorry a female sex hormone and because of estrogen only females their physical characters they are changing at a particular age because it's a female sex hormone so estrogen is a common substance in our body it's a hormone but zeralinone when it was given to pigs when they were consuming the food where zeralinone was there in that food so uh, it behaved like estrogen in their body okay and uh, there were disturbances in their bodies because whatever consequences are there out of this female sex hormone they observed those enhanced issues in their bodies okay so that can create a problem so we did not have any kind of data regarding humans and what kind of changes uh, are there in the human bodies for this uh, zero lenon but certainly some things are very much harmful and the data is uh, fuzzy for this now see they are saying that maybe these chemicals are related to more uh, cases of breast cancer or other common type of cancers nowadays so we don't know maybe these chemicals are proliferating and maybe they are causing these issues which are so common nowadays that every th third or fourth woman has breast cancer or cervical cancer and these uh, common cancers are also there with males like mouth cancer and all so various chemicals are actually working at their base okay so uh, Journal of Food Science and Study. They analyzed the samples of NSSO, National Sample Sample Survey Office, which is a survey by Ministry of Statistics and Program Program Implementation. Okay, so they analyzed this data and they said that Indian uh, diet that should also be having this frame and uh, this particular limit should be set on this zero lenon chemical because EU has set 0 0.25 m uh, milligram per kg. Okay but we don't have any limit and strong epidemiological data linking human zero linone levels with disease such as breast cancer are important when we will have data then only we will be able to assess the negative or positive impacts of these chemicals on our body and uh, certainly these are going to be very negative because they are changing the uh, default level metabolic metabolical uh, uh, structure of our body and our biochemical reactions certainly these are going to be negative but how much negative that is the issue here and for that we need research and our research and development and funding and infrastructure uh, investment in these areas that's again perilous okay so we talked about this yesterday only and now see these issues are going to be very serious if you are not going to pay attention here next article is regarding the municipal model that is a kind of a failure in all the cities of india and why writer says that these are broken we need to urgently rethink the way our cities are run you see now you see in this picture it's a pile of garbage it's a mountain of garbage actually near the city of delhi where whole solid waste is dumped here at the site of ghazipur okay and it it's it is a place to visit actually it's not a place to visit because it's so dirty and it's so smelly but uh, you see it's a it's a kind of a 
a new age uh, or mismanaged urbanization based a kind of a different miracle and that's totally negative in sense many people were dead because the pile of garbage overran uh, their body uh, when these people were crossing the road uh, alongside it so that was a huge problem and you see many gases air pollution and uh, the disease causing bacteria creatures they are certainly there and we don't have any plan we don't have any strategy and we don't have any working strategy for this particular issue solid waste management is one of the biggest problem in the today's world where our unplanned rapid urbanization is creating a havoc and these are the clear symbols clear evidences for that you see we are looking at the economic progress that's fine but we are only looking at the progress we are not thinking about the additional issues and that is solid waste management that is the biggest one in these additional issues you see it's like when we are building a uh, a particular house for living and when we are not caring about the gates or we are we are not caring about the water and electricity supply so it's of no use so without solid waste management this progress is of no use because it is going to create a lot of troubles in the future all the diseases all the uh, pollution air pollution and uh, the damage to the diversity of the animals you see these uh, poor cows and uh, other dogs and all they are dying because they are consuming very harmful chemicals in these dump sites okay so that's the issue so in the delhi delhi's case it is just 8 meters short it just 8 meters short of qutub minar site so so huge this uh, mountain is and you see in 2002 only this area was declared over saturated and 17 years are gone now and 200 2500 tons of solid waste is dumped every day till date in this on this site so you can imagine what kind of uh, mismanagement is going on if you talk about the city of chennai here you see chennai bangalore these are the cities where a lot of lakes used to be there so four lakes today which are only uh, main uh, lakes left which are providing fresh water to the city of chennai in these lakes only 10% of their capacity is left now and within one month this whole amount of water would be gone and what they are going to do after that that's a big question today water will run out in a month according to the report in this paper nearly 10 long hot months to go before the next rainy season because you see uh, tamil nadu it gets rain from the north east retreating monsoon so in october only next rains would come and what they are going to do for the next 10 months if it is going to be depleted within a month what they are going to do so what is the condition of our cities you see chennai uh, actually maintain a world record in 2017 when it faced the worst drought in 140 years in the recent past and now it is going to beat this uh, particular world record in the next year upcoming year of 2019 where almost a drought like conditions are there and 10 months are left so what they are going to do it was not a world record but uh, it's a, it's a very negative record for us okay if you talk about the city of bengaluru you see the lakes are on fire here you see the condition of lakes it's total foam and uh, you cannot see the water through it so leave about the fresh water conditions it's so troublesome that these lakes are on fire belandur lake it's a very famous lake it's many times it's on fire and one another lake we uh, discussed two days back so these are lakes there used to be more than 250 lakes in the city of bangalore in 1960s but today it's all gone it's less than 50 lakes left and they are all polluted and the level of pollution you can see that these are uh, catching fires uh, every other day and you see in this white foam so dangerous chemicals are and they are so corrosive that it cracked windshields so corrosive chemicals they have and these chemicals are only catching fire so you can imagine the condition of our cities it's a uh, it capital of india and we have seen the condition of chennai we have seen the condition of delhi we have seen the condition of bengaluru so what kind of cities we are living in and what we are proud of if these are clear evidences of our progress then what we can claim let's talk about the important crisis which is going on and the important missions which are going on you see if we combine the expenditure of all the urban local bodies and their budgets 
then it is just 1% of GDP. Just 1% of the GDP. And do you know the uh, population living in the urban areas? Unofficial data says it is around 40 to 50% of the population living in the cities today. Official population is one third. That's also very, very huge. That means around 40 crore people. But it's more than that. It's more than 50, 60 crore people. That's the unofficial data says. And you see this city administrations, they generate only 44% of their finances only 44% of the, their finances from their own revenue resources that means they are lacking around 60% of the fund already here and out of this 44% 60% goes to salary payment and wage payments so only 40% is left so out of this 40 only 40% is left so how much infrastructure they can provide, how much services they can provide and what kind of management they can bring here. That's the huge issue. It started way back in 1882 when financial decentralization happened for the first time during Lord Ripon's time. Okay. And after that 74th amendment came in 1992 when uh, uh, this uh, local governments and all they were upheld and they were given the constitutional status and 18 important works were assigned to them so that they would be managing this condition of cities but you see the condition today where we have reached and uh, what are our claims today you see the claims that uh, the amrut scheme which is going on it started in 2015 that atal uh, mission for rejuvenation and urban transformation so great these schemes but the actual uh, reality is only 20 percent of the projects are completed and within one year it is going to be ended so only one year is left and 20% of the projects are completed and only 3% only 3% funds are utilized till now whatever funds were allocated only 3% are used so what kind of progress is going on this question is uh, totally apparent but who is going to ask this question because there is a different political situation today nobody can ask questions okay and the states like Bihar and Assam are there they have not even managed to finish even a single project even a single project they could not finish in four years last four years so that's the issue so crippling shortage of money is only a part of the problem execution you see the condition here only three percent are utilized the funds now this wretched experience civil administration it's a problem permanent bureaucracy it's a problem because maximum amount of corruption uh, which is there in the civil administration and this political bureaucratic nexus and changing set of political representatives every five years or less they are changed and they are bringing new schemes they are uh, totally halting the progress of the previous schemes and they are not evaluating their progress and they are uh, bringing new schemes and they are uh, claiming them to be the best schemes that everything was, would change within two four three five years and this uh, india would uh, turn into a heaven but nothing happens you see the reality today we don't have actual robust plan for solid waste management we uh, released these uh, rules regarding the solid waste and plastic waste medical waste but the follow-up is very very weak that's the issue riddled with corruption functioning is opaque of these bodies not transparent that's the issue and virtually no public scrutiny when there is no public scrutiny no questions are raised so when there are no questions then what where is the question of accountability there would no uh, question of accountability and so that, that's why they are saying that we are uh, running a zero corruption government or zero uh, corruption administration because there are no scrutinies and data are manipulated that is mostly uh, a famous allegation on the working okay so these are allegations now see for the urban poor who depends most on civil services it is going to be a huge problem because if you talk about the rural areas they are not having that much a big issue because they can manage their uh, these uh, whatever they are consuming these grains and all and uh, the quality controls are lying with them only they are not using much packaged food or mass produced foods they are not using them but it is the cities they are using these mass produced uh, food items or any other items and chemicals are certainly there preservatives are certainly there and the uh, further issue of solid waste management you see they are saying that whatever gases which are produced in these landfills mainly the methane and other NOxs and sulfur dioxide and all these are very harmful gases even methane can cause cancers so 
how poor this condition is and india holds the world record for housing the maximum number of most polluted cities in the, in the world you see the list out of a top 20 polluted cities more than 15 cities would be there from india more than 50 cities and it's a surety every time we need to radically rethink the model of urbanization today totally unplanned urbanization any number of people are uh, coming and settling in these cities you see the condition of delhi the capital city more than three crore people are living in in this uh, small area of delhi three crore people you cannot imagine the density and what kind of waste they are producing where it is going it is going to these uh, garbages and these uh, mountains of garbages and there is no management and very less less than five to ten percent is recycled that's the biggest issue so about all of these things you see about about these government initiatives the citizens and the citizenry is the main culprit they don't care about their cities and they don't raise questions they should raise questions they should ask questions to these administrations because they are paying taxes and all they should ask questions but no scrutiny is there from the citizens side they need clean cities but they, they don't ask questions they are not uh, uh, coming on a platform together and they are not asking questions so it is the responsibility lying with citizens only to take care of their cities so that's the issue now some facts uh, you see soon you can see how the harapans looked because in the site of uh, rakhi gadi rakhi gadi is in haryana in the uh, uh, district of hisar only okay and uh, there is a district called fatehabad it's hisar so there all these cities uh, all these uh, ancient places ancient um, habitations rakhi gadi banwali and Birana, these all sites are there and these are oldest sites in india you see their age is around 6500 bcs means more than 8000 years uh, ago from today okay back from now so there they have found a lot of uh, specimens all these skeletons and all and now they are trying to recreate their looks that how they looked and how much uh, match is there for the uh, normal people who are living in the present so how much similar those people were or how much different those people were they are recreating their looks so the company from korea and other researchers they are taking part and within two months they will be uh, coming up with this data with these pictures and all okay so we can know about that and you see uh, this is the biggest site of indus valley civilization and the pre-indus valley civilization pre-indus valley because the date backs to 6500 BCs and Indus Valley uh, uh, the time ranges around 3000 BCs to around 1600 BCs okay and that these uh, dates they vary always so it's a pre Indus Valley site and very important site Rakhi Gadi and the biggest one more uh, bigger than these uh, 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 cities of Harappa and Mohanjodaro which used to be there during the Indus time next data we displayed uh, uh, these uh, tanks and all the t90 tank and the m777 and the korea's k9 vajra these were the main highlights in the military display yesterday okay on the rajpath you see uh, lal kila is the place where they unfurl the indian flag on 15th of August on Independence Day and uh, this Rajpath on the India Gate is the place where they celebrate the Republic Day okay and all these rallies all these displays are there from all the ministries all the departments and also in the military display these were the highlights K9 Vajra we have taken it from uh, South Korea and M777 is the ultra light howitzer and we have taken it from US these are very much advanced howitzers and uh, T90 Bhishma this was the main battle tank that was showed here okay and akash surface to air missile that was also seen you see akash is the surface to air missile and this whole system sm system they displayed in these uh, exhibitions and arjun tank was a uh, another uh, display here and one more was dru and dru is indigenously made by hal so that was also on display so all these were highlights and one additional data is all women contingent of the Assam rifles that made its debut yesterday okay all women contingent of Assam rifles that's a specific force and you see this is a uh, howitzer and other important displays now the data from science 
one study finds that diabetic drugs which are being given to diabetic patients and if these patients are also suffering from tuberculosis then there is a positive change here because of these drugs you see they improve the efficacy of the two deep tb drugs there is a issue of antimicrobial resistance in the tb patients because tb is a disease that's a bacterial disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis okay now the issue is that they are becoming resistant and this tb is now mdr tb multi drug resistant tb okay and the main issue of resistance and how they are maintaining this resistance uh, to these drugs they are creating a kind of a biofilm here it's a picture from electron microscope and this 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 looks like a film and it's a physical barrier that these drugs are not able to penetrate their sites and these bacteria are not dead so now these diabetic drugs they are destroying these biofilms okay biofilm these are the important physical barriers okay physical not chemical physical barriers and these bacteria they create these biofilms so these uh, drugs fda approved drugs of diabetes they are destroying this biofilm that's the issue and regarding the tb it's one of the biggest menace for india we have a 2025 uh, strategy for tb but that looks uh, very very uh, tough and ambitious task and we are moving further but with a slow pace okay next data is regarding cbm bharat project what is this uh, cmb it's a cosmic microwave background this mission uh, happened in tifr uh, in pune and uh, one more institution was there and they are applying this project for the approval of isro now we need to know about this cmb and what this project is all about and why india is having a unique opportunity to step into this field here you see when around 13.8 billion years ago when this universe used to be a singularity means it was a single point no dimension no height no uh, length and no depth only a single point whole universe was totally under this particular singularity and you must have heard about the word of singularity all the times this is asked and uh, two years back also upsc uh, asked about this singularity concept that it is related to uh, what okay so it is related to universe so universe was a singularity and after that it was having uh, unlimited density and unlimited energy and mass inside it because whole universe what co was constructed to this particular point so this singularity was of unlimited energy so there was a huge blast and we call it big bang you must have heard about the big bang theory and it is based on this concept so out of this big bang it was a huge blast after that universe uh, started expanding and it is still expanding after around 13.8 billion years which are passed now but still it is expanding and we have enough evidences regarding its expansion okay and when it started then all these galaxies all and uh, inside these galaxies all these stars and inside these stars these star systems solar systems they developed and these planets uh, bodies uh, and uh, satellites and all they developed so it started way back with this big bang when this big bang happened then a lot of radiations they were released and you see these are not destroyed any time and they are still traveling somewhere in the universe so in whole universe we find this relic radiation relic radiation and that is filmed under this microwave uh, particular capture and this looks like a disturbance and this looks like a background a typical background which is showing this radiation in this picture okay and this is called cosmic microwave background and it is one of the most interesting phenomena when we are trying to know about universe and it is showing us you can see in this picture this is a blank space between these uh, stars and all and this blank space is actually a background and it's it is called cosmic uh, microwave background cmb but it's not a, a particular evidence we have theories it, and these things are only based on hypothesis okay but we are trying to collect evidences and that's why biggest number of uh, most ambitious projects which are going on in this area to know about universe to know about the starting of life and all so all these are going on and you see the issue here that uh, all the projects this like this project or a gravitational wave project we are an important contributor we are important participant in this project of gravitational wave uh, uh, capturing also where we observed that a gravitation moves in waves and these waves were captured in the ligo observatory and you see india was a important participant here 
and now it is decided that there would be two observatories in India also regarding this gravitational wave capturing. Okay, so India has huge huge opportunities. India has huge uh, genius uh, number of uh, people, and uh, they can contribute a lot here. And even ISRO is growing with leaps and bounds. So ISRO is also a very much ambitious agency. And uh, here, if we step in this area where not much data is available, not much uh, researchers are available from India. So it can be a huge opportunity in this field of CMB and its exploration. So this data is about that. Okay. So cosmic microwave background. So this is all for today. And uh, this is the Facebook space of mine. The link is here. And this is the group where I upload all these PDFs daily in the evening for PIB in the morning for the Hindu paper. So thanks a lot. Keep watching and MCQs I would provide you tomorrow. Thanks a lot.